on January 4, 1987, two trains collided head-on in Chase, Maryland on the Northeastern Corridor. The Northeastern Corridor, owned by Amtrak, is one of the busiest mainline train tracks in the world. Not only does it have to serve high-speed Amtrak passenger trains traveling at 125 miles an hour, but slower freight trains, usually traveling between 25 and 50 miles an hour. Slower commuter trains also have to share this track. Usually everything would run like clockwork, but on that day until 1993 was the worst train wreck in Amtrak's history. At 12.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Amtrak train 94, the Colonial, was departing Washington's Union Station. The train consisted of 16 coaches and two newer locomotives, AEM-7900, the prototype, and AEM-7903, which was leading. These two were the first to be built for Amtrak in the early 80s, replacing their aging GG-1 fleet. They were destined to do 125 miles an hour. The train consisted of passengers returning home from the holidays or students ready for the second semester in school. The train's next stop was Wilmington, Delaware, before reaching its destination, Boston South Station. However, it would never reach Wilmington, Delaware. Meanwhile, at Bayview Yard, east of Baltimore, three Conrail GE B-36-7s were beginning to leave light with no freight cars to Anola Yard in Harrisburg. Ricky Lynn Gates was the engineer, and Edward Cromwell was the brakeman. They had forgotten to do a series of cab signal tests in their lead engine, 5044. Someone had also removed one of the light bulbs for the Pennsylvania Railroad-style cab signals. Even worse, an alarm that would alert the crew they had passed at a stop signal was silenced with duct tape. And if that wasn't enough, the crew were smoking marijuana joints. People tend to think marijuana has little to no effect. However, it can mess with your brain chemistry, causing a lack of focus and forgetfulness. It can prove deadly on the job, especially on railroading, where you could miss a signal. The Conrails were traveling at approximately 60 miles an hour, approaching gunpowder interlocking. The tracks were set for through track movement only, so the Amtrak would pass the Conrails, stop at a signal, only to rejoin the line again when the tracks were clear. However, this did not happen. Gates passed many signals, including a stop one, warning him not to switch to another set of tracks. Cromwell was responsible for calling out these signals if Gates missed them, but shot the signal. Finally, Gates applied the brakes, realizing he did not have a clear set of tracks ahead. However, because of the speed of the Conrails, they overshot the signal and were sitting on the main line at the same track. Colonial was roaring down on. Jerome Everett saw the Conrail sitting on his track and applied the emergency brakes, hoping to avoid a collision. The Amtrak slammed into the Conrails. With a combined speed of 120 miles an hour. smoldering and pasture cars were crushed. The rear diesel 5045 exploded and burned down to its frame. The middle engine 5052 suffered severe cab and nose damage. 5044 suffered little damage. Cromwell was injured in the collision. Gates was uninjured. However, in the Amtrak train, there was less luck. Jerome Evans was instantly killed in the collision. 903 was thrown to the west side of the tracks among some trees. 900 was crushed by the Amfleets that came tumbling down behind it. Experts say the force of the collision was like 300 tons of TNT going off, enough to level a city block. Within minutes, rescuers and medics arrived on the scene. 
they were overwhelmed by the scene of destruction. Inside the mangled amplates, they heard people screaming and pleading to be saved. But their tools, such as the jaws of life used in automobile accidents, were simply useless against the mangled train cars. <laughs> Using ladders, airbags, and ropes, or whatever else they had at the scene, they worked feverishly, even into the night, to save the last victims. A total of 16 people lost their lives and 170 were injured. <laughs>